You're listening to The Cyclone on J360 Radio. With your hosts, Deb and Al. Jay has entered The Cyclone. Hello, J360 Legion, and welcome back to The Cyclone. Words I never thought I would say again, considering the long hiatus that befell us. But it's good to be back to, uh, wow, the season's practically over, isn't it? It's like we're near week 15 right now, and we've been gone for, like, how long? You know what? As a matter of fact, we're going to do a variety format today, and we have a special guest with us. It's Mark from Mark and Margo. How's it going? And, of course, with me tonight is, yeah, Alan. I mean, hey, hey, Alan. Bruh. Why you gotta do my intro like that? I, I, I know, I know, right? Okay, okay, and with me is my good friend, Alan Navar. Thank you. Hello. Oh, man. Was so, that guys, so hard? Well, yes, Alan, I'm afraid it was. Yes, yes, it, it kind of was. All right, fair enough. <laughs> but outside of that, guys, how about those eagles, my brothers? Uh. <laughs> And hey, y'all were ready for Doug Peterson's blood when we didn't get that ten and one, but they're eleven and two. I'm feeling it though. Yeah, you, you might feel eleven and two, but Carson Wentz is on for the year. I am uh, a big bowl supporter. I don't think he's Wentz, but he's a good quarterback, and people got to start remembering that because he did pretty damn good that one season. Oh, they may not have gotten to the Super Bowl. You know, we're talking about twenty-seven touchdowns to what two interceptions. That's still hard to do, even if you're even if you're a star quarterback. Yeah, I know. I, I think Bulls will do a fine job, but I just imagine Chase Daniel, who's now on the Saints, going, "Damn it! I could have finally started a game." Oh no, my God! That's oh, so true. oh. <laughs> the dude goes straight to the Eagles because he was Peterson's guy, and he was supposed to start, loses the job. But he's like, okay, whatever, I'll, I'll stick it out. And then he gets traded, and now he's stuck behind Drew Brees. And now, finally, Foles gets to start over Chase Daniels. And Daniels is probably, like, like sifting a glass of wine being, damn it, that should be my time right now. You know what? It's bandwagon fans that are upset about that because they were only in it for Wentz. They weren't in it for, like, everything else. Like, you know, now that Wentz is hurt, I mean, Nick Foles was our guy at one time. So I think we're going to be okay. I think people are just looking over the fact that, like, what, he had such a bad year with the Rams, but every quarterback sucked for the Rams. Yeah, well, Jared Goff came on strong, man. That was a battle. Well, his first rookie, you know, performances were pretty terrible. But, yeah, yeah, the second Jeff Fisher got booted out the door, then all of a sudden it's like, wait, I'm a quarterback? And all of a sudden I know or he's a freaking beast. Night and day, son. Night and day. Could Mitchell Trubrusky do the same thing? I'm saying his name wrong on purpose, by the way, because, well, it's the Bears. I don't even know if anybody actually likes Mitchell Trubisky. You know, I think Trubisky could be pretty good. I think you just got to give him a chance. I'm not really sold on John Fox as a coach. He's had some good seasons, but he just never seemed, honestly, to to be that good with quarterbacks, even though he did get some quarterbacks that looked bad and ended up being pretty good, like Bell Holmes. Um. What's so funny about I, – I, I have to talk about the Bears for a little bit. Oh, go ahead. And you guys you guys can offer opinions as well. What happened Sunday between the Bears and the Bengals? Why did they blow out the Bengals? Like, what was it, like 30, um, 37, 33 to 7? What happened? Bengals are bad. The fact that the Bears got tired of losing to somebody. That was the first time in years the Bears scored 30-something points. Made them look good, dude. <laughs> it made us able to talk about the Bears tonight. That says a lot. I, and Trubisky wasn't that great that game. He wasn't? I don't think so. Well, he didn't He didn't have to be that great. The Bengals will destroy themselves, as they Dude, usually do. Okay, yeah, Trubisky wasn't really that great. I mean, he completed 25. He wasn't bad, but he wasn't great. Um, 25 for 32, um, 271 yards of TD and an INT. That's, like, it's still, he. he's literally, all Trubisky is... And I, I've said it even before draft. I think I said it um, during a cyclone before draft. Um, I said all he was was a check down quarterback. And he is. That's what he is right now. But he still has a chance to progress. I think he ha- he does have potential to be better. That's true. And granted, his, the receiving core isn't, I mean, other than Kendall Wright, I mean, I don't really think they have anyone that great. And Kendall Wright wasn't really that great. Uh, Well, so I guess the safest thing to say is is that the Bears are just in a rebuilding cycle. Yeah. Yeah. 
pretty much. Yeah. On a hilarious note, did you guys hear, I guess you could consider breaking NFL news. The Patriots signed Kenny Britt. I knew they were going to do it. I, that was such a Patriots move. Kenny Britt was the big front office acquisition of the Cleveland Browns. And it didn't work out. The GM got fired. Sashi Brown got kicked out the door. <laughs> I, I actually do kind of find it funny. So the first thing move that this new GM does is he, he cuts Kenny Britt. First thing. And I literally was telling my friends, now watch, the Patriots are going to sign him. Sure enough, four days later, yep, the Patriots signed Kenny Britt. I'm like, dang it, now watch. He's going to go to the Super Bowl and win a Super Bowl. Yeah. We all know it's coming. Yeah, that's kind of the way it goes. <laughs> it's Malcolm Floyd 2.0. That, that's exactly what it is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's going to be a star, Al. Um, yeah. And I'm just like, dang it. Well, actually, I mean to ask you, how do you feel about Dorsey? He's fine. I think he's going to be a good GM. I mean, he was the one who rebuilt the Chiefs uh, with the Alex Smith trade and everything like that. So, I don't got a problem with it. Okay. You think it's going to work with the Hugh program, though? I think Hugh Jackson's going to be shown the door. Um, I, I don't know. There, there, there's a part of me um, that, despite Haslam said they're going to, uh, he's going to stay in 2018. I think he said this about Mike Patton during his last weeks, too. Yeah, how about you, Mark? What do you think? You think he can fix and rebuild him? I don't know. I mean, it's always a possibility. With the Browns, I just don't understand why it's been so long. Like, usually, at least a few years, most teams find coaches and GMs that actually are able to rebuild a franchise. It's just weird to me that it's taken the Browns so long to find that, you know? Because most teams kind of have a little bit of like a roller coaster effect where they'll have their up, you know, their good seasons and then some bad seasons. The Browns are just always bad. They've had a couple seasons where they had like what 10 wins. Yes. Yeah. But that's it. Like nothing dominating. And I mean, the, something's got to break. Eventually one of these GMs has to work out. Hugh Jackson coming in, I thought he did decent with the Raiders. I thought he could have been really good with the Raiders. I didn't understand why they fired him, but I expected a lot more out of him. And maybe he just doesn't have the players. Maybe they're just not that good. I mean, personally, I would, if I was the Browns organization, I would start trying to build an offensive line. Stop worrying about changing quarterbacks every season, you know? Yeah, uh, and you know, considering this was the team that everybody was looking for after the draft, you know what I mean? This was like the team that won the draft. I mean, they got Kaiser. Did Miles you get, Garrett. Yeah, Miles Garrett. And then they had... And Joku? Yeah, Joku. And then... Who's that other guy, that, that safety that they played like 50 yards away from the field? Peppers. They were a big deal during the draft. I mean, the whole press release is covering them and just mediocrity. And then some, you know? That's not mediocrity. That's just sad. That's, that's 13 losses and no wins. Um, I, will, I want to explain something about Hugh Jackson and the Raiders because I, I actually fouled this during that year. You want to know why uh, Hugh Jackson got fired for that? I will explain. Okay. First first off, he traded two first-round uh, picks to get uh, an overrated Carson Palmer. That was stupid. That was stupid. Oh, God. Uh, he was taking power over everything. Gee, doesn't that sound familiar? Um, yeah, like in Cleveland right now. Secondly, um, week 17 when they lost and they went 8-8, eight and eight, he threw his entire team under the bus for no reason. So, like, he was he was blaming on all, like, oh, it's all the team. It's not my fault. It's the team's fault and blah, 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 blah. And then two weeks later, he gets fired. So Reggie is, McKenzie's on uh, the door. So is that coming yeah. up this year? Yeah, I think he's already started doing it. Uh, there was a uh, there was an interview. There was an interview with um, um, that I saw. I'm sorry. There was an article on Pro Football Talk, and Hugh Jackson was in an interview, and he said, "I don't think it would be fair for me to hire an offensive coordinator." And I am like, Hugh Jackson, you idiot! Wow. Just, <laughs> Okay, like, yeah. No, Hugh Jackson's got to go. Yeah, and he's like, I was hired for my offensive talents. What offensive talents? Did you – that Packer game really made me mad, by the way. But we'll, we'll get to that in a bit. Well, oh I mean, if God. you want to do a complete Browns package right now, I mean, it's up to you. <laughs> All right, so I watched the Browns game. 
I don't know if you guys said. I know Jay didn't. But I, oh, I, I had better things to do, man. I, I, I couldn't do it. Jay, you were probably trying to solve a Rubik's Cube. Look, look, the idea is, dude, I probably would have been solving a Rubik's Cube while doing my taxes. But look, the idea is this. That was just the idea of that. That's just sad. I just mark him as dead crow now. They get the Cyclone dead crow, which is I know, And you told me that like an hour during the game. Like, yeah, yeah that's going to be our dead crow of the year. Yeah. And I am like, dude, but they're winning right now. And then surely enough, Kaiser threw one of the worst interceptions I've ever seen in my life. I wonder like, if I can find a replay of that. Um, yeah, just uh, go to the NFL on YouTube. Um, just check out the Browns Packer highlights and just go towards the end. You'll see the interception. It is so bad. It was the worst interception I've ever seen. This, it was like this year. <sighs> yeah. Really? This year? It was the worst intercept. I'm trying to think if there was a worse one. No, no, I can't think of any. I'm looking at the highlights right now. It just started. Yeah, he played so good, and then just. I, I don't know. And okay, what I normally do on my Facebook, you know, Jay probably knows this best, is I I talk so much crap about the Browns, like I am so like, yeah, we're gonna win. So notice this week I was ridiculously quiet. <laughs> yeah, you were like a Dallas Cowboy fan after we won on Sunday. <laughs> oh God, I love Cowboy fans. They crack me up. Oh but, yeah. yeah. But no, like um. No, like, everyone's like, well, where's your taunting and commentary in the Browns game? I'm like, I can't say anything. Like, and I'm like, D- how are they going to lose this game this time? This had to be, the like, the worst interception I've ever... This was, like, Brandon Whedon-esque. Okay, well, well, let's say, like, you know how um, Deshaun Jackson does, like, ignorant-ass punt returns from time to time? Oh, God, oh, God, are, when are, he was are, on the are, Redskins. Yeah, are they, that, he, are they that bad? It was around there. Um... Uh, Oh, wait. But, I saw that play. I'm sorry. That the Sean Jackson play cracked me up. Oh. Didn't he run, like, 20 yards back, and then he gets tackled on the I mean, I mean, it was the perfect lineup for a safety, <laughs> you know? Actually, you know, like, it, it is original. I mean, the idea of an orange football helmet sitting there that has never made a Super Bowl appearance in its existence, yes. Hey, we won AFL championships. Like I just said, didn't make That's an appearance true. over there. At, yeah, yeah, I get that. But the idea is they never went to the big game, though. And I know that's really petty for me to say. It's not necessarily petty. It's just kind of, I, I mean, I kind of feel for them. I mean, it's just like the Eagles, they've been to, you know, a couple Super Bowls, but they haven't won one. And that's yeah. frustrating. So being a Browns fan, that's got to... That's going to suck. You know, I'd really like to see them do well. Yeah. It's funny, you know, Bill Belichick, who I believe, and you can disagree with me if you want, but I believe he is one of the greatest coaches that's ever coached. And and, and you can make your arguments, and everybody's got their reasons, and I get it. Well, I'm, not a, I'm not a Jets fan, Mark, so, I mean, you can go ahead and say that. It's true. I just think, you know, it takes a lot to win that many Super Bowls. And... I'm actually kind of shocked that he didn't do better with the Browns. But you know, when you look at it, he didn't do too good there. But yet somehow with the Patriots, he's like, you know, he's been good even when Tom Brady hasn't been there. So Yeah. Yeah. Never for- Wait a minute. Hold on. Yeah, actually, he- didn't he quit use- writing by writing I quit on a napkin? Yeah, he did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so awesome. Oh, man. But, yeah, so did you see the pick yet? Oh, well, yeah. I actually saw it um, during the game, and I just remembered it after I saw it. And I remember thinking to myself, God, when the hell would he throw it there? It's a, it's a, was I, that a throw or a punt? Yeah, right? Like, I guess a really sad punt. I don't know. <laughs> For t- a whole 10 yards. They had uh, a chance. If he would have just taken the sack, you know, that's stupid. I mean, what what do you, what do you say? Uh, it's a moment of arrogance, or what do you no, say? No, he's trying to be a hero. No, he pan- it was a. T- you know, what it reminded me of something. Probably, I don't know if you guys remember this ever, but I do because you know I lived in Wisconsin, so I had to watch a lot of Packers games. There was this guy, and his name was like T.J. Rupley. Oh yeah, third string quarterback for the Packers. 
And um, <laughs> and okay, so Brett Favre got injured, and who's your backup with that? It wasn't Brunel yet, was it? I think it was uh, Ty Detmer. Ty, 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 yeah, yeah, it was. Man. Yo, Coy Detmer used to be my favorite quarterback, dude. <laughs> dude, Coy Detmer was a beast, best <laughs> field goal holder ever. But yeah. he was not. He was. He could throw. He, he wasn't bad. He was just a really small guy, and he was, yeah. We'll talk about the use of like five seconds. I, I swear, I want to talk about that in a second. But um, um, so Rubley came in. It was third and two. The Packers are up. You know, they, they couldn't possibly lose this game. And Holger wanted him to simply hand off the ball. And or was it he was supposed to take a kneel? And he audibles into a pass play for no reason. And the players had no idea what's going on the offensive line and everybody. And so he hikes the ball and the blockers have no idea. So all the defense is coming. So he runs, takes this big throw and it's just immediately an interception. The Vikings get into field goal range, kick the field goal and win the game. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It was awesome. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then my favorite thing is Mike Ogram right on the po- um, thing said he's an idiot. <laughs> and cut, <laughs> cut him the next day. Oh my god. Dang, I, I wish that was on YouTube. It was so great. <laughs> well, I guess we can't um, gong Kaiser too much, huh? Uh, I mean, I will tell you that was a pretty bad decision. I mean, this, and there's Things were a little bit different back in the 90s. This kind of throw now. <laughs> what makes it better now? Like, this is one of those things they tell you. Not to, you never see this happen. It's how bad that is. You used to see it happen a lot more back then. Oh. I know. And the, the second to go to overtime, I was talking to my friend. I'm like, we're going to lose. And they was like, what? I'm like, don't worry. A brown thing is going to happen, and we're going to lose. Yup. And that's a very brown thing to do. That was so Browns. I hope they only get one win. I, well, it's going to be tough now. Well, you know what? Maybe you'll get that Christmas win like you did last year. I, aren't we playing the Steelers the, next week? Okay, I didn't say it would be easy. <laughs> We're not beating the Steelers. The Steelers have too much to play for. Um, I don't know. I think we play the Steelers and the Ravens, and I don't know who we play for the next game. What do you think of this? The Steelers Eagles Super Bowl. What do you think of the chances of that? I want it to happen. Um it really depends how Foles is gonna go in the system. I, I know he's played in Andy Reid system, which is what Doug Peterson brought back to Philadelphia. Um We gotta see how he's gonna do against play because the Vikings are no joke. Um I don't know what happened with Case Keenum though Sunday. He just, he just played like a third string quarterback. Mm. Hey, actually, how, he how about that uh, Steelers Ravens <laughs> game not too long ago? Did y'all get to y'all get to see that? I did watch it because <clears throat> I'm hoping for the Ravens to lose. I, I wanted the Ravens lose. I thought the Ravens were going to get it at one point. I can't believe the Steelers got it, but Steelers are a good team. Yeah, not bad. I hate the Steelers, and I will. Well, other than the fact that I'm a Browns and Bills fans, and so obviously the Browns Steelers rivals, I hate the Steelers because every year everybody always counts them out, and then somehow they always find a way to win. Every year, it is so frustrating. Well, it always <laughs> it, it depends on how healthy Big Big Ben is, and not to mention like you know his two arms that he can throw to. You know what I'm saying? Well, also it doesn't help that they do have like one of the best running backs in the NFL. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you exactly. know, we just have to look at that and be like, yeah. Hey, man, enough, the, the Eagles have a three headed monster at running back, though. Oh, that's true. Sure do. Oh, my God. That, actually, um, what's up? Barner's not bad either. So, I mean, you got Ajayi, you got Blunt, you got Clement, and then you got uh, Barner. Wait, wait, his name is Blunt? Yeah. Yeah. 
Wait, did he actually get pulled over one time for smoking weed? Uh, no. Yeah, he did when he was a Steeler. The Garrett Blunt? Yeah. He was a Steeler? Yeah. Okay, hold on. Let me check this out. Yeah, he, um, I think he actually went with Le- Le'Veon Bell. And they both got pulled over, and Le'Veon and Blunt was smoking literally a Blunt. <laughs> I really got to check this out now. I got to see this. Because, hey. like, I remember he got cut, and he went to the Patriots. Well, you know, we do have a rivalry with the Steelers. I mean, it happened way back in November 1933, and the last meeting of it was September 25, 2016. So, you know, we should go ahead and do that. The next meeting's supposed to happen in 2020 at Heinz Field. They call it the Battle of Pennsylvania. Oh, I hope you guys get it done. I mean, if they get into the Super Bowl, we get into the Super Bowl. And, you know, as much as I, I want us to pull for that win, obviously. So we get that out of the way. That would be something to talk about on the way to 2020. Would you <clears throat> would you go to the Super Bowl if both teams were in? Oh, hell yeah. It's right there. <laughs> I mean, what kind of question is that, Al? Well, I'm at a mutual ground, though, for this year. If, if both got in this year, would you go to the Super Bowl? Totally. And I wouldn't go for no nosebleeds either. I'm putting top dollar down so I can see what's happening. It'd be like, like it'd be like giving money for your wedding, Al, which I would never do. Now, look, yeah, of course not. <laughs> I mean, I mean, dude, we're gonna find a way to be there, even if we have to work security there. That includes Mark. No, we have to do it the Drew Carey way. Remember that we just gotta find a hot girl, and like completely distract the security guard while we all sneak in. That could work too. Yeah. But yeah, I would not mind an Eagle Steelers Super Bowl. That would be pretty cool. I mean, at least that's something to keep an eye out for. You know, like, God, what teams aren't going to make it to the playoffs now that I think about it? I know, like, the uh, Redskins aren't. I know the damn Giants aren't. You know, damn well, the Browns aren't. Well, I wasn't going to do that. We already threw enough salt on them right now, so. Oh, wait. Is that your team? Are you a Browns fan? Uh, I am a Browns fan. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm a diehard Browns fan, diehard Bills fan. Speaking of that, the Bills played really good um, Sunday. But... Now, see, that's oh. somebody to keep an eye on, too, the Bills. I don't yeah, that... why they sent Tyrod Taylor that one game. Um, like... <clears throat> I know why. I can explain it. Um, They were blown out back-to-back. They were blown out, completely blown out. Um, What were the two teams that blew them out before? What? what... <sighs> I think it was the Saints and the Jets. Mm. Um, and Tyrod, it just he doesn't take chances on balls and um, on throwing. And it's like, <clears throat> like trust me, I've had a lot of frustration about this too, because it's like I understand your receivers are depleted, and so they wanted to see what they had in Peterman. <clears throat> the problem is, the problem is, it's like. Well, Peterman, he started out good. Started out, like, first couple passes were pretty good. Then Calvin Benjamin got injured. So now he had nobody to throw to. And the old line just fell apart against that. The San Diego's defense is amazing, by the way. Um, it's a very good defense right now. I don't know what – I don't know how they got so good. Um, I'm sorry, not San Diego. Forgive me. Los Angeles. I, I'll never get that right anymore. Oh yeah, um, <clears throat> their defense was so good, and every time Peter Van went to throw, there was like four people there. Takes a throw, intercepted. Takes a throw. Like I, people overrate that he had a five interception performance, but um, he he probably in reality probably had three or maybe two. That's still not good in a first half. Yeah. Yeah, but still, it's not as bad as people made it out to be. One interception came off a deflection off a receiver, and then a cornerback caught it. That's yeah. that, that's not on Peter Mint at all. I still and think there, Tyrod Taylor is a, a really good quarterback. I, I feel like he should get more of a chance. You know, I don't think he's had a head coach. I mean, I, I don't like, think I don't think McDermott ever believed in him. Um, and I don't blame him because like. Well, the problem is he's too much of a check-down passer. I mean, he's a great athlete, 
but he just he checks down too much, doesn't throw the ball but, deep enough. But is it his fault, or is it the coach telling him to? Because he's got an arm. I've seen him throw deep. He's got an arm. He doesn't have to be a check down passer. So well, is it the coach? Maybe no, check I've, down? Heard, I've heard the offensive coordinator tell him to take more chances, and he just don't. He just won't do it. Like you know, um, I don't know if he's going to resign with the Bills. Probably not. Um, so chances are he's probably going to go to a quarterback needy team. Probably like, don't say Cleveland, a quarterback needy team. Like I, um, I don't know. Like, is there a quarterback needy team? Uh, Washington Redskins. Yeah. And, of, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Those are like the Browns next year. Or the or the Jets because I think McCown's <laughs> done this year. You think the so? Jack? Huh? The portals. No, the, the New York Jets. Jets. Have the Jets. Yeah, yeah. Because um, I don't think McCown's going to come back this year. By the way, did you see his interview after that loss he suffered? Yeah. Man, I felt so bad. I I always liked Josh McCown. Like I thought he was great. Like he's not going to be a Hall of Famer, no. But the dude literally plays with his heart, and he's a good guy to have around. Yeah, he broke his left hand. Oh, wow. Yeah. wow. And he's out for the season, and he's crying because he thought he'd let the team down. And that's pretty classy. He blames it on himself. He's not going to say the team let it um, – we didn't play good enough. He flat out said, I didn't play good enough for the team. And to me, that's a leader. Oh, yeah, he does look like he's crying here. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, he was he was so choked up in tears. Um huh. He's a good guy. Seriously, I liked him when he first started in Arizona. I, I I followed him throughout like his entire career. Even that year he was gone when he became like a high school coach and he played for the UFL that one year. Is he related to Luke McCann? Ah, uh, brothers. Ah, uh, I thought so. Yeah. Um, he was okay. You remember when the, when Jeff Garcia was with the Bucks and Luke McCown was there? Yeah, I do remember that. Actually, uh, Luke McCown was originally drafted by the Cleveland Browns. Yes, no. Nice. I'm trying to think, what year was that? That had to have been two. Was that the year Jeff Garcia went to Cleveland? Yes, it was. Yep. Yes, it was. It sure was. Oh, my God. And Jeff Garcia, because the offensive line for the Browns was so bad, last only like a few games and Luke McCown had to start. Yeah. Oh, that was not pretty to watch. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, eventually Jeff Garcia did go to the Eagles, and he was doing pretty good for us. You remember that time? Oh, that was a good year. Yeah. He did pretty good. He did. That's true. Garcia, he was kind of a check down passer, too. Garcia did more, though. Garcia does more. When I, when I see the offensive formation – you know, I would like to see Tyrod Taylor in an Andy Reid offensive situation to see how that goes. Yeah, like, I can do that. Yeah, like a West Coast offense. Almost. Hold on, actually. And, and I hate to bring this up because it pains me to say this. But uh, Wentz might be out uh, at least for another year. And I don't know what's going to happen with Foles, whether they keep him starting for now or if they pick up another quarterback. But they might cry. It's possible they could grab Tyrod Taylor. Yes, as Oh, man. That wouldn't be a bad pickup for them at all. I mean, if it depends how long Wentz will be out. Because they're saying some of these people are uh, 9 to 12 months. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I can see now. You guys are going to, instead of signing someone like Tyre, you're going to sign TJ Yates. Why Why you got to hate I don't so hate TJ Yates. TJ Yates, huh, Al? <laughs> hey, he's starting Sunday for the Texans. Oh, my God. You know, I, I try to be as caring and compassionate about when your team loses, but now nah, forget you, pal. I'm not saying he's going to start for the Eagles. The, <laughs> that would be awesome. The fact that you mentioned him was <laughs> enough. Oh, that would be terrible. Damn you, Alan. <laughs> See, the thought of DJ Yates makes this freaking thing like. Damn shame, isn't it, Mark? Oh, man. See, See what I got to deal with, Mark? Oh, by the way, yeah. I didn't mean to ask you guys. Um, New York Giants. <laughs> um, I feel bad for them, actually. I, I shouldn't, because I'm an Eagles fan, but I feel for them, you know? I feel for them. Yeah. They, had, uh, they had so much expectations coming into the season, and um, they just have been bad. They, they seem, this whole thing has crumbled. Nick and Do got fired. He, it's funny, because I remember back when they hired him after they got rid of Coughlin, they had hired him to help improve Manning. Then they benched. Then he benched him. Yep. They sure enough did. 
It's like you were brought in to help this guy out, and you bench him. You know, I, I always said this. Um, I didn't understand the McAdoo hire. I always thought, like, I, I know people are going to call me crazy. I thought North Turner would have made a lot more sense as a hire because he's more of an offensive first person. McAdoo's offense sucked, even even be, when he was an offensive coordinator. Oh, it showed. Yeah, he, he's terrible. There was nothing good about Ben McAdoo. And it, I hate to say that because, you know, really Packers. Right. You're right, there wasn't. Like I, I'm like, I'm like when they were doing that, I was like, who? When they hired him, <laughs> you know, we always could be wrong because who would have ever thought Anthony Lynn would be actually a pretty decent head coach for the Los Angeles Chargers right now? You know, mm. they really turned their season around. That's for sure. That is for sure. Yeah. Hey, didn't we have a guy on this show that was a Chargers fan? I remember him. Yeah, me too. And then that cheetah got him. I told you not to. Oh. I told you not no, to let him no, go. No, 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 man. It was the idea that he choked on a hot dog at a Chargers game. Poor bastard. How about, <laughs> how about uh, Sean McVay? Hmm. Well, I knew it was a matter of time. I knew yeah. he was going to turn that team around right away. Who did he coach with before? Uh, Washington. Oh, wow. Defensive coordinator. Yep. Wasn't he? Yeah, he was. Wait, was he the offensive coordinator or defense coordinator? But he was, like, the youngest head coach hiring in a long time. Yeah, dude is good. He is he's – got, he's got the right mentality. He knows what he's doing, that's for sure. I know. I mean, that's another thing. That's another team that – I mean, seriously, like, they took well, you guys. He, to... he was the assistant tight ends coach for the uh, Redskins. And then he became the offensive coordinator. Yeah, okay. That's why I thought. I'm like, wait, was he defense or was he? No, no, okay. The Bills uh, ha- um, coaching heart was the uh, Panthers defensive coordinator. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. You know who I, I, re- you know who I knew was going to be a good head coach before who? it was? John uh, Harbaugh. John Harbaugh. When right? he was coaching the Eagles. And he was, uh, he was a special teams coordinator. And I think he was an assistant head coach at one point. Uh, and uh, yeah, you could just tell he was going to be a good coach. And look what he's done with the Ravens, man. He already won a Super Bowl. And... Two Super Bowls. What? Yeah, two Super Bowls, dude. No, no, no. He won. No, no. Um, Harbaugh didn't win the first one. That was somebody else. Are you was... serious? Yeah, that was um, Bill, What's Bill O'Brien. No, what? not Bill O'Brien. Who was that? Who was the head coach for the Ravens in 2000? Oh, Brian Billard. Brian Bill- I'm sorry. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay. Phil Brian will never win a Super Bowl. But... Oh, man. Okay, guys, yep. You you win this round. Though I could have sworn it was him. But anyway, go on. They all look alike. <laughs> They literally do look uh, the same, like Brian Billick and John Harbaugh right now. They, yeah, they, they 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 look alike. Yeah. Yeah. My yeah. apologies, yeah. Mark. Could, we get we get that Dane DeBito <laughs> on the sideline coaching. <laughs> It'd probably be the same thing. Well, you know, it happens. Yeah. But I'll tell you uh, one thing, though. He is a good coach. Um, he is, but. I want to see what happens when the Ravens move away from Joe Flacco, and I wonder if they're going to be so significantly better. I mean, I'm hoping so. I mean, because most of the time it's been a defenseman's game anyway with them, you know? Considering considering if he doesn't melt down or not. It's not like I'm um, hating on Flacco. He is a decent court. He's like Eli Manning. Yeah, he's good when he's good. Yeah, he's good when he's good, but he is like the most mediocre quarterback. Um, I mean, just the thing with Eli Manning that makes him probably a Hall of Famer is the fact of the matter is, is that he beat us like you know the sixteen and zero Patriots in the Super Bowl, which that should make any quarterback a Hall of Famer. Which is why benching him is still a pretty sad thing because you looked at that, you're like, now this is the Patriots killer. What are y'all? What are y'all doing? Yeah, who was that one? Okay, there was an Eagles game during that streak, the Patriots streak. Uh, you guys know who it was. And took the Patriots to the absolute limit. Who was that? Was that A.J. Feely that year? A.J. Feely? With the Dolphins? No, yeah, A.J. Feely was the backup for the Eagles. And McNabb, 
McNabb was injured and Feely had to start, I think, against the Patriots during that undefeated streak. And he put on a freaking clinic. I remember this. It was such an extremely good game. Yeah, AJ Feely. Yeah. Oh my God. Did, didn't he throw like for like five TDs or four TDs or something? I threw for like for over three hundred yards. Yeah, November twenty fifth, two thousand and seven. Wow. Yeah, he beasted that game, and then he just threw a critical pick at the last, and that's what ended it, sealed the fate. I remember that game. I watched it. And I was yeah, because like, it was wow. it was it was Patriots thirty one, and it was Philadelphia Eagles twenty eight. It was a very close game. And they were 11-0. Yeah. yeah, props to Feely for that game. And that was, uh, I just, it is so weird with A.J. Feely. I, I really do feel he should have gotten a starting chance. Um, I know, I I believe, I, I believe the co-host tonight did say that he was with the Dolphins. But did he start for the Dolphins? Who, Feely? Yeah. Yeah. Was he any good? I don't think he did that well with the Dolphins. I don't know. But the transformation happened when he came to us. No, we got him before he went there. Damn it. The no, he came back to the Eagles. Yeah. But this was before he went to the Dolphins. Well, let's see. Because remember, the game the game happened in 2007. So let's go ahead and fact check that. No, I think that next year, didn't he go down to the Chargers after? Go sworn. Um... He went from the Eagles to the Dolphins. The first time for the Eagles, then the Dolphins, okay. and back to the Eagles and to the Chargers or something? Yeah, yeah. This was his second tour with us, Mark, because it was um, after he came back from the Chargers, and it was 2006 to 2008 with us. Then he went to the Carolina Panthers, and then he went to the formerly known St. Louis Rams to 2011. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. 2008, he was backing up Jake DeLome? Yep. Philadelphia Eagles, 2006 to 2008. So you backed up Jake DeLone when he went to the Panthers? That's hilarious. Yep. They're like the same quarterback. Yep, Carolina Panthers, 2009, yep. Wait, wait was DeLone still on the Panthers? Yeah, he was. He was still on the Panthers till 2011, right? Yeah, because you see, he was only there for, Feely was only there for one year because he went to the Rams when they were in St. Louis in 2010. Oh my God, he went to. I don't even remember any of this about him. So he went to the Rams, and that was it for him after yeah. 2010. Yeah, that was it. In 2011, that was it. 2010. I'm trying to think. The Rams quarterbacks. Bradford was probably injured, of course. Um, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to sound like a deep, but for like the first four years of his career, Bradford was always injured. So. He ain't hurting us. I mean, do you feel bad for do you feel bad for him, Mark? No. See, exactly. <laughs> Everyone thinks Bradford is such an ale, and I'm like, he did nothing wrong. Just uh um... Well I mean it was a little bit of it was a little bit of him, it was a little bit of our front office, and then it was the media. And then, you know, just best thing we could have done was part ways. Here here's my thing. Um, if Bradford wanted to stay in Philly, he shouldn't have said he wanted to be traded. I mean, that's his fault. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you're worried about losing your job, you know, then push yourself to do better. Don't mind about it and ask to be traded, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, but, I he, he, but even... he also knew he wasn't going to be the franchise guy in the first place. So it's like. Well, I think it is he signed that big contract extension, right? Uh, and apparently they did not let the uh, the front office did not let him know. Yeah, we're gonna trade a ton of picks to go get Carson Wentz at number two. And that was like a few days after he signed that. He goes, wait, what? You know, like I, I, I you gotta look at it from that perspective. You know, like. I, but at the same, I can also I'm, look at the idea of Hurricane Chip coming in and ruining us too. So. Yeah, I'm here. This. Um, no, see, here's the thing is I hear you there. I'm not saying he shouldn't have felt a certain way about it, but there's certain things, you know, if you want to show a team that you want to be with that franchise, then 
you take it and you're like, okay, this hurts. You know why they do this. But then you have that contract extension. You just sign. You play through and show them that you're worth more. You never know. They might trade that other guy. I mean, look at Tom Brady. He said people like Garoppolo. Who was it before Garoppolo? Don't say Matt Castle. It wasn't. It, it was wasn't some... Castle. It was uh, before Garoppolo. Um, wasn't it Brian Hoyer? Hoyer? And they no, get... Ryan Mallett. Ryan Mallett. Mallett. Ryan Mallett. That's who it was. And, you know, they had him behind uh, Tom Brady. And then they had um, Garoppolo behind Tom Brady. And look. He kept pushing through, dude. Tom Brady might, and I hate, you know, if any, you know, anybody's a Jets fan, I'm sorry, but, uh, I mean, this dude, he could play into his 40s, but he kept going instead of letting that bother him. You know what I mean? Like, sorry, I'm sure it bothered him, but he just said, well, so what? I'll prove it that I'm, you know, better than this guy. This Why do you say sorry, Jets fans? <laughs> you know. I tend to troll about being a Jets fan, but I have yet to meet, like, a full-blooded Jets fan. I have actually met one once. It was, like, years ago, but I did know a Jets fan. I I met some. You you don't see, you know, you don't meet as many around here. (laughs) As I said, on another sport, I, I am still yet, and I don't know, maybe, maybe you guys can, I am still yet to meet an Oakland A's fan. I've met one. She's a nice girl. Cosplays and stuff. Is she really an Oakland A's fan, or is it just because she looks good in, in that jersey? No, she's really about the team. She'll tell you baseball stats and everything. I was like, damn. <laughs> you into this, ain't you? Other than, like, Ricky Henderson, has there been a good Oakland athletic? Well, you mean between now or when Philadelphia actually had that as the baseball team? Good point. Um, well, there was Ricky Henderson, Mark McGuire, and I guess, I guess it was he could say before he shot his finger off. That's it. God, you know, I actually forgot he did shoot his finger off. Unfortunately, we ran out of time for all of you in this special. Unfortunately, we ran out of time in this episode to continue on this great conversation. But no worries, though. We're going to do something a little different for all of you. And that is, in honor of the Cyclones' return... This is going to be a double special. So part two will be coming along shortly. And we're going to discuss what we think is going to happen in week 15. So in honor of the Cyclone crew, this is Jay signing off.